Hi, everyone. My name is Kristen Verhey. I'm a professor at the University of Michigan. Uh, I got into the field kind of by accident. I was studying just general trafficking inside cells, not really interested in motors, but kind of stumbled into motors and fell in love with them. And so, of course, kif one is one of the most extraordinary motors that we, kinesis motors that we know about. And so it's kind of an obvious uh, direction to follow. And you mentioned kinesin and KIF-1A in particular as being extraordinary motors. Uh, at, a, at a broad scale, what does your lab study about KIF-1A? We broadly study kinesin motors and how they interact with microtubules. They walk along microtubules. They uh, maybe slide microtubules, just kinesin motors in general and the kinds of things they do inside cells. Uh, so for KIF-1A, we um, are interested in how it works as a motor and uh, what kind of cargoes it carries. And what kind of techniques or models do you use to uh, study those kinds of questions? Yeah, I would say sort of two flavors. One is more of a biochemical, biophysical, where we do a lot of single molecule imaging on the fluorescence microscope, and we try to observe single molecules and understand how they use the energy of ATP hydrolysis to walk along in microtubules or in, at least interact with microtubules. And the second is more of a cell biological approach where we try to study motors and their cargoes inside cells, inside the complex environment of a cell, and try to understand how motors find the correct cargo, how they find the correct microtubule track so that they are going to the proper destination. Um, so a lot of, again, a lot of fluorescence imaging, live cell imaging. And in the context of KIF-1A, you know, you're addressing these questions of how is KIF-1A uh, interacting with microtubules and what kind of cargo is it carrying? Uh, what kind of questions specifically have you been working on recently in the context of KIF-1A? Yeah, I'd say three things. First, um, just trying to understand how the basic properties of individual KIF-1A motors. So what kind of, how fast does it walk? How long does it walk before it falls off the track? How does it generate force? Um, uh, and, you know, all these things are driven by ATP hydrolysis. So how does it convert chemical energy into mechanical work? Um, we published a paper last year with Arna Generic on KIF-1A force generation. And so that was really exciting. So we're still interested in that kind of thing. We're interested in how specific disease mutations impact the basic motor ability um, of KIF-1A. Then I would say we're also interested in um, how KIF-1A works in groups. So inside cells on a vesicle, uh, there would be more than one KIF-1A motor. So we're interested in how many and how do they work together? How do they not interfere with each other? Uh, if there are multiple KIF-1A or other kinesins and dynines, how do they all uh, work together to navigate um, an axon and a neuron, for example? And most of those, the in vitro experiments, the uh, single molecule experiments we do with um, just where we've just isolated the core motor domain of KIF-1A to understand its ATP hydrolysis and microtubule behavior. But we're also interested in sort of the full length protein and the question of auto inhibition. How is it regulated? Um, what is the structure of the molecule? Uh, we're interested in working on that um, or working on that right now. And all of these are really in-depth ways of looking at KIF-1A and addressing different parts of its structure, which is obviously important because we have mutations across several domains in KIF-1A. Um, when you're thinking about your KIF-1A research uh, and how it applies to rare disease communities and CAND in particular, uh, do you have any thoughts for the community of kind of how research lends itself to finding better therapeutics or better understanding the progression of a disease? The CAN community is amazing, and I'm just so grateful for the uh, patients and their families and people like Dom and Dylan and everything they're doing to bring this community together. Um, I think having the basic science researchers and the clinicians um, talking to each other and hopefully working together is really important and it's 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 rare um, I, I this is sort of my first um, 
time in my career that I've been involved in something like this. So, I, and I've really been enjoying it. So I think there's a lot that the basic scientists can do to um, look at specific disease mutations and try to understand how they could be causing defects in axonal transport. But we need the clinical people to tell us, you know, which um, mutations should we be studying? Are they in a heterodimeric or homodimeric uh, in form to impact motor activity? Then we can work together to think about potential therapeutics. We can test therapeutics um, in, in cells. They can test them in patients. So I think it's been, it's a really great community. And I think we need um, all kinds of people to come together um, to think in different ways, to use different approaches, to bring different backgrounds and ideas together so that we can make a difference for the patients 